Hope versus Hopium is part of the title of a recent research paper authored by well-known climate scientist James Hansen and colleagues Makiko Sato and Pushkar Karecha, in which they provide evidence that the global warming that the planet has been experiencing since the start of the Industrial Revolution is now accelerating. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the term hopium, it is a rather sarcastic term for irrational optimism that is found in the world of internet memes. The reason that Hansen uses this term in the title of his recent paper is based on his contention that there is growing evidence that global warming has been accelerating during the past decade or so, and that current global climate models are not properly accounting for the increasing rate of global warming. This figure from the Hansen, Sato, and Karecha paper illustrates dramatically their claim that global warming has been accelerating during the past decade or so. From 1970 on, we have very good near-surface temperature data from satellite observations. On the left, we see the near-surface temperature data for the entire planet averaged over time between 1970 and 2010. The temperature change in degrees centigrade over that 40-year period is represented with a color scale where the color white indicates no change over that period, decreases in temperatures are shown in shades of blue, and increases in temperature are shown by the colors yellow, orange, umber, red, brown, and lavender. The more rapid warming of the Arctic and northern regions can be seen in the left panel. When, the, when near surface temperature data are averaged over the entire planet, we find that during the 1970 to 2010 period, the planet overall was warming at a rate of approximately 0.18 degrees centigrade per decade. The panel on the right shows how near surface warming has changed between 2010 and 2023. When looking at this panel, note that the color scale has changed. Also note that the areas of most intense warming in the northern hemisphere have moved somewhat southward from the Arctic. In addition, intense warming has been taking place in northern Europe and Siberia, and significant warming is taking place in parts of Antarctica. When averaged over time, between 2010 and 2023, the rate of global warming has increased to about 0.30 degrees centigrade per decade, indicating that we are in a period of more rapid global warming. A word of caution though, there are long-term weather patterns such as El Niños and La Niñas that can affect global temperatures, particularly in the tropics. Climate scientists typically prefer to use data obtained over 30 years or more to determine how the climate is changing. Hansen et al. argue that the current El Nino event, which is almost over, is not particularly strong and that the observed increase in global warming is being driven mainly by changes in particulate emissions, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. Namely, the decrease in particle emissions over the North Atlantic and North Pacific owing to new regulations imposed upon particulate emissions from ocean-going ships. Hansen et al. argue that current global climate models do not adequately include the effects of changes in particulate emission on global climate imbalance. We have known since the end of the 19th century how the atmospheric greenhouse effect works. Certain gases in the atmosphere, such as water vapor, carbon dioxide, and methane, have the property that they absorb infrared radiation from the surface of the Earth and re-radiate it in all directions, including some back towards the surface of the Earth. 
On a daily basis, the amount of thermal energy that comes in from the sun must just equal the thermal energy that leaves the planet. Otherwise, we would all quickly fry. If there is an imbalance between incoming and outgoing thermal energy, this imbalance is overcome by the surface of the Earth warming up a bit so that more thermal energy escapes from the parts of the planet that are in darkness. The role that particulates play in how much thermal energy from the sun reaches the planet's surface is important. Fine particulates, such as those formed by the emission of sulfates from burning fossil fuels and from volcanoes, have the property that they help to reflect some of the incoming solar radiation and in doing so they tend to cool the earth and counteract warming cause, caused by the emission of greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide and methane. This chart from the Japan Meteorological Agency of annual global average surface temperature uh, illustrates the point. Note that between 1945 and 1975, there was very little change in global average surface temperature. This was a period of rapid electrification worldwide, and sulfate emissions from coal-fired power plants effectively counteracted warming from greenhouse gas emissions. However, the air pollution and acid rain caused by these sulfate emissions led to regulations requiring equipment to control the fine particle emissions from coal-fired power plants. Once those regulations kicked in, global average temperatures began to rise again. Hansen et al. note that global warming in the period from 2010 to 2023 is 0.30 degrees centigrade per decade. That's 67% faster than the 0.18 degrees centigrade per decade in the 1970 to 2010 period that we showed in their figure one. The recent warming is different. It peaks between 30 and 60 degrees north latitude. They argue that such an acceleration of warming does not simply happen it implies an increased climate forcing. Imposed change of the Earth's energy balance, in other words. Greenhouse gas forcing growth has been steady. Solar irradiation has zero trend on decadal timescales. Forcing by volcanic eruptions has been negligible for 30 years, including the water vapor from the Hunga Tonga eruption. The one potentially significant change in climate forcing that they identify is the change of human-made aerosols. The large warming over the North Pacific and North Atlantic coincides with regions where ship emissions dominate self sulfate aerosol production as shown in figure three from their paper. As I've mentioned previously, Hansen et al. note that current global climate models don't adequately address the effect that the reduction in aerosols over the North Pacific and North Atlantic oceans has had. One reason for this is that the contribution of aerosols to global warming is difficult to infer directly. However, they point out that the impact of decreasing aerosols can be inferred indirectly from measurements of the Earth's absorbed solar radiation and of the Earth's energy imbalance. And it turns out that these data have been available since the year 2000 from satellite measurements and a global network of ocean floats. Global absorbed solar radiation has increased dramatically since 2010. It's increased by more than 1.4 watts per square meter. That's equivalent to an increase that would happen if carbon dioxide emissions increased by 100 parts per million, but they haven't. This figure from their paper shows that there has been a big increase 
in absorbed solar radiation in the last decade between 30 and 60 degrees north latitude, which is where the particulates from ocean-going ships have been reduced. But there also have been increases in the tropics and even in Antarctica. This indicates to me that changes in particulate concentrations are only a part of the story. Changes in ocean currents and loss of sea ice probably are playing a major role as well. One thing that I think we can say with some certainty is that the planet has become darker. That means it's become less reflective and because of that, it, it is warming faster than it had in the past. Clearly, global climate models nearly to, need to catch up with the factors that are causing this increased rate of warming. In my personal view, the situation is not irreversible, but a twofold effort will be necessary to avoid the major consequences of rapid global warming. The first thing that is needed is a major move away from fossil fuels. The second is much more effort on direct and indirect carbon capture. I hope that you have found this video informative. Please share it widely. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments section and I will do my best to respond. And if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would appreciate it greatly if you'd hit that subscribe button. And in addition, if you have time, take, take some time to view my other climate-related videos. Thanks a lot for watching.